The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with a lovely slash, if you've been a fan of the show for a little while, familiar face in Tracy Thompson. Um, She is one of our uh, mindset coaches slash pretty generally amazing human being. This is a... (laughs) I, I think of all the people on our team, I get to spend the most time with Tracy because we do live events and she's always there. So anyway, Tracy's, if you're not a fan of Tracy, give it 20 minutes. You shall be. That's how it goes. <laughs> um, so we, uh, it's cool because I, I do all the tactical coaching uh, in our universe and Tracy does uh, a large part of the mindset coaching, especially for our high level programs. Mm-hmm. So anytime we get together, I love taking a problem that our people are dealing with right now. That's you, Cleaning Nation, and giving you the benefit of what to do. That's what I can help you with. And sadly, the more important part of how to think about it, which is Tracy's expertise. Um, Any thoughts on that before we dive in, sister? No, this is going to be juicy. I can't wait. Let's do (laughs) it. That's such a Tracy word, (laughs) juicy. I've never described a podcast as juicy, but as soon as you said, I'm like, yes, it's going to be juicy. (laughs) juicy. (laughs) So I'm like, I want to, I want to see what's going to happen. I didn't know it was going to be juicy. I'm in. I was going to take a nap halfway through, but I guess, uh, I guess I'll pay attention. So yeah, I got to be honest. I hate saying nice things to Tracy. He's a big fat head, but what are you going to do? So when we started, I started because Tracy wasn't here at the beginning. I really thought if I just told people what to do, Mm. I've done things. And when I did those things, I had success. So if I tell Mm. other people what to do, they'll do those things and they'll have success. Man, good example of a smart guy being real stupid. (laughs) It's so funny as we started getting into every aspect of business, leadership and culture and all the things that we teach. But I would say hiring is probably the clearest example of Mm. cleaning nation thinking, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Mm. And me painfully learning, having done this thousands of times with guys and gals, what you believe is far more important than what you do. And if you don't believe the right things, I could move in with you and coach you and beg and scream and you will not move. Um, however, if you don't believe the, if you do believe the right things, you have the right kind of frame and context and beliefs about you and your company we have to offer our system's great and it'll really grease those wheels and make it go fast, but you could, you'll figure it out on your own. might be more expensive and longer than you want, but you'll figure it out on your own. So let's start with the big fat beliefs that kill everybody. And we'll spend, I'll, I'll do a little bit on the tactical, but really I want to get the, the beliefs because that's, that's going to kill you. So can I just throw out a bunch of beliefs that one or two of you in Cleaning Nation may have had at one time in your life? And we'll let Tracy just whip out her juicy samurai sword and start <laughs> slashing them to ribbons. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hiring, hiring today. Okay. A, let's do it. Yes. And by the way, well, first of all, such a male, female energy, her word picture is juicy. And my word picture is slashing things to ribbons. <laughs> so like just such a dude and such a lady. Like, so we got something for everybody out there. Um, and Tracy made a really good point. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say, so the hiring environment today mm-hmm. is very, and we're recording this February, 2022, very different than it was pre COVID, right. very different than it was at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. Very different when it was kind of mid to end of COVID where the government was paying a bunch of people money to stay mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. But so I want to acknowledge that. Yes. But believe it or not, the core, what do you do? You know, our systems and processes that we teach haven't changed a bit. They work before COVID, they work during, and they're working right now. The mindset, the beliefs that you have to have haven't changed a bit. The right mindset worked before, it worked during, it worked after. Now the application and how that looks and feels in your life, that, so the way you experience it is going to be a little different. But the good news is when you've got good coaching, it works in good markets, it works in bad markets. So I want to encourage you guys, don't use, well, my market's different, COVID's different, everything's got to change. The foundation is a foundation. Gravity still exists. One plus one still equals two. The way you experience some things can be different, more based on how you choose to experience them than what's happening in the world. But yeah. that's more nuanced than it is. Everything's changed, right? So right. that said, let me just hit you with some of the big fat 
mind messes that people bring to us. So this, I'll give you some that are kind of more happened during and after COVID and some that have just been universal. I'll start you with a universal one. Tracy, <laughs> I love getting to be that because I'm always the one dealing with these questions. It's so fun to be the pain in the butt, like making Tracy work for a living. Tracy, I can't get enough customers because I don't have any employees, but I can't hire any employees because I don't have any customers. This is an impossible situation and you don't, and no one wants, and by the way, no one wants to work in my area. How do you, how do you like, how do you like that? How do you like me now? <laughs> Tracy's laughing because she's like, he's being hilarious, but he's the sound. So for you listeners, this sounds like I'm being 70% over the top. Any of you that's coached in our universe, I'm being about 4% over the top. Like Tracy's like, sounds about spot on to me. <laughs> yeah. The only difference is, is that usually there's a much more whiny tone to it. Yes. Usually I'd be <laughs> weeping and crying as opposed to it's being more like, pain in the ass. it's more like you don't understand. <sighs> oh, that's, well, yeah. All right. Give it back. So now here, I don't even need to be involved in this podcast. Tracy, you're, you did it so much better. So I'm, now I'm going to make you do all of the work. I'm not even going to ask the question because you were asking. So ask and then answer the question. And I will just sit here and marvel. <laughs> so Yes. So no, right ask, I, I need to hear why he, Mike did it all wrong. You got to ask them. You did a little. Oh, you got to. So yeah. Yes. It's, it's more like. Come on. Give me the full thing. It's ask more it like, to me. Mike, but you don't understand. You don't understand. I have been at this so long and <laughs> I, I would totally hire people if I, you know, if I had more customers, but, but I can't get more customers if I. If I don't have employees and, and, you know, I've tried to hire, but nobody wants to work here. You, ah, you just, I'm so frustrated. You don't understand. <laughs> so this is super fun. Cause any of you that know Tracy, she's super powerful in terms of how she shows up and just that voice. If you know, Tracy, those words and that tone coming out of her body, like is like, I'm like, I've literally, I'm having to wipe my eyes cause I'm not there. Water. <laughs> it's so anti Tracy. Like, <laughs> You get to know Tracy. I'm sure like that was like nails on a chalkboard for her. Just like just, that was not Tracy. So anyway, uh, yeah. I enjoyed. So get to know Tracy. <laughs> Listen back to this podcast. It'll make you laugh when you know the real Tracy. You heard whiny Tracy. All right. Welcome back. Actual Tracy. Yes. Smack whiny Tracy around. Let her know what time it is. Yes. Yeah, so um, right off the bat there, that is a big story. I mean, woo, I just charged with all kinds of negative emotion and, uh, and frankly, well, you know, victimhood in that, like, you don't understand. I'm a victim. I'm a victim of my own making. I'm a victim of circumstance. I'm a victim, victim, victim. And, um, and I'm just going to call it like a good in the back. Yeah. First of all, we all know it's garbage, but let me just give you guys a why. Yeah. Victim, it's like drugs, man. It feels good at the beginning. I haven't done drugs, but I've, I've, I see, I see things. I hear things. Um, from what I can tell, it's really good at the beginning. Like I've got some problems, and I'll do this thing, and I'll feel much better now. And then maybe if I do it again, I'll feel better then. And if I keep doing, as long as I keep doing this drug, I will feel better. But at some point, I will probably want to stop doing the drug, and then all the problems that I had before, they're there. Sometimes with interest, and now I got a drug problem. So. With that whininess, it's such a drug. Like it feels mm. good. It's not my mm. fault. Mm -hmm. It's COVID. It's my mm -hmm. place. It's mm -hmm. the the man's holding me down. The woman's holding me down. What, what whatever. I'm too old, tall, short, rich, poor. Whatever. Everyone's got their own story. So it feels good at the beginning because we can right. just go. Not my fault. Not my bad. Right. That guy. Right. That guy. And you, you keep doing it. You keep doing it. But the problem is, at some point, you go. I want a different life. Mm. And the price, the price of the drugs is just an addiction and probably a lot of money, um, but you get to feel good. The price of the drug of blame is you, you can't do anything. At the end of the day, you've got to go, I get along with that feeling good because it's not my fault is the feeling of hopelessness and powerlessness because if it's not my fault, I can't fix it. So it doesn't feel great to say I broke it. It feels worse to say, I can't fix it. So again, if you like that drug, you can do it, but it's someday you're going to want to wake up and go, I need a different life, but there's not a blessed thing I can do. And now you've kind of painted yourself into a corner. All right. Tracy's face is, uh, I, I oh, was like, what I called it. I have a name for this. I have a well, name for this. Tracy's got a name for everything. Story. I should have known. I should have said, what's your name for this thing, Tracy. <laughs> so the name for that story is, is, um, is the need to be right in your wrongness, right? Being right in your wrongness. So the, the 
it's self-fulfilling, right? The more you argue for why you're right, the more you get to be right in your wrongness. And so there, you want to talk about addiction, that addiction to being right and proving to yourself over and over. Yep. See, I knew nobody wanted to work for me. I knew that. Yeah. You know, so it becomes Feels a, good. Right. So the more you argue for that, for that story, the more right it becomes in your world, in your, in your experience. And so then it, it's a real vicious cycle. So it reminds me of my six-year-old. <laughs> and yes, I am kind of calling some people sometimes in some circumstances, <laughs> myself included at some times in my life. Um, I, for any of you who've had or have a six-year-old or that neighborhood, um, he's a little bit of a know-it-all, right? Actually, dad. And the problem with the know-it-all is there kind of a pain in the ass when they are a know-it-all? Like when you've got a really smart guy that constantly knows everything, not the best to hang around with, but at least, you know, if you need something done or you need to know something, he's helpful. The worst is a completely ignorant person that knows it all. So actually, dad, he'll ask a question, you know, are mummies real? No, son, they're, they're actual are dead bodies that were wrapped in things that are mummies, but they don't come to life. No, that's not true. Actually. And then he'll tell his own narration. <laughs> so we do that, which is uh, frustrating as all gets out. So a lot of times people come to us for coaching um, and we'll give them truth and they'll mm -hmm. give us actually, because they're, so he is addicted to his wrongness and it, it just like you said, it makes him feel good because he gets right. six. I'm sure he doesn't have a lot of control over his life and mm -hmm. he doesn't know much, but the problem, the price he pays is as long as he keeps actualing people that actually know what's going on, he's, he'll remain ignorant. So at six, it's adorable. It's well, not actually that adorable, but it's tolerable. <laughs> we accept it. Little man six. At 16, it's really not attractive. At 36, we've got some arrested development. You're probably not got a lot of friends. So, all right. We've kind of dove too far into the the um the story. The story. Keep keep going with the first thing that you had. I, but I just wanted to make that point of the victim. Yes. Mentality. So we beat that to a, to a pulp back to where we were. Keep going. So really it. So the, the solution right off the bat, the, how to break free of that is you have to decide, you have to decide that your righteousness and being right in your wrongness is not as valuable to you mm. as the outcome that you really want. So if what you really want is to get out of cleaning, to hire a staff that you you know, that you love, that's a core values match, all of those great things to grow your business, to do all of those things. And you have to decide first mm -hmm. that that's more important and more valuable than being right in your wrongness, right? And, and changing that story. So right off the bat, you have to decide. I know that sounds simple, but seriously, until you make a decision that it will be different, Regardless of how it feels, regardless of the old story, regardless of how right you have been in your wrongness, the, you, that's the first step. Have to you decide. Did you did something embedded there that I, I think people are going to miss. It was really genius. Embedded in your have to decide. Notice there was no judgment. So <laughs> I get a little judgy. So I go decide that's stupid and this is smart. But then I have to judge old Mike, which makes it even harder decision. Right. Um, if I'm just, what you said was perfect, that the value from mm -hmm. this new belief is better, is going to get me more, is going to get me what I want more than what the old belief. So I'm kind of acknowledging giving me, the old belief was giving me something, right? right. Like if you just say right. drugs are stupid, they're all bad. No one should ever do them. They're completely irredeemable. That's super judgmental. And people are going, I want to try it. And they're going to try and go, that wasn't the truth at all. There is some good here. I did enjoy it. And then it gets really convoluted when you try to fix it. So I love that you kind of gave space for, you got something out of that know-it-all thing. And sure. we're not even judging it. We're just saying the price I got for that was good or it had its goods and its bads, but I want this more. I just love that. It, it creates a space where you can move forward without having to be like, well, on top of all that, I have to admit I what a jerk and how stupid I was. And that price may be too high. It's like, we don't have to admit that. We just have to go. I did that. I got this result. It felt a certain way. I want a different result. I'm going to do something different. I love that I'm taking coaching going, I need to give my own self that, I won't say permission, but that encouragement, like that's how it could be. All right. Yes. Moving on. Yes. So first decide, decide what's more, most important, what's more important. And then from that place of decision, once you've decided now you can choose the new story that will serve the new outcome 
that you're committed to, that you've decided you are, are going for. And that, so the old story, you know what you got. So the new story needs to be in alignment with the new outcome. So that's the next step is crafting a new story that will help you get the new result. So give me, if you would, or give us an example of an old story and a new story, and then let me kind of poke some real world holes, not holes, but like, okay, but what about when this happens? Because it will happen. But give me a good example of an old story and a new story, and then we'll, then we'll kind of try it out in the real world. So the first thing you said, you, I'll just say the old story because you said it, right? Um, yeah, but you wind it. You did it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take one part of this the story. We'll we'll hone in on one part. You don't understand. No one wants to work for me. I I'm, tried. I I'm gonna tried. demand Whiny Tracy show up, making him every podcast that you're on, you gotta have Whiny Tracy do at least a 30 <laughs> second. I love this chick. She's the best. <laughs> Just so why even on our company meetings at the event, we need more whiny Tracy. She's my new favorite. I like Tracy. I love whiny Tracy. <laughs> She's oh, so man. annoying. All right, keep going. Sorry. I just, I love that lady. Go ahead. You don't understand. I've tried. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Hide. Nobody wants to work. Okay. There's the old story, yeah. right? The old story. And when you say it, it just feels gross. It feels gross. It feels defeating. You know, it comes along with all kinds of cruddy, um, not great state, not great. State. Let's acknowledge you know, it does have the escapism. It does there. It feels better in that you don't have to be responsible, but it feels right. cruddy when it, you're actually trying to hire. Yeah. So, so you can't bring that story with you to your new decision to no matter what, to grow your business by hiring. So that's an old story. You got to replace it. So an example of well, a new give- they're just yeah. before we get into the new, I'm going to make it even harder and give you more old stories so we can kind of have a global new story. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways that'll go. And there's kind of like story. Let's get a little more honest. Let's get real to the truth of what we really maybe don't ever say out loud. So story is perfect. Nobody wants to work. I can't do it. Everything sucks. Blah, blah, blah. Truth below that is <clears throat> I can't pay enough. I'm new and people are going to know I don't have the experience something like that, a little more closer to heart and like what we're really feeling. And then if we asked real nicely, no one was there and you knew no one else would hear it. We go, I don't have anything to offer. They're going to know I'm a fraud. I'm not good enough. And we might, we'll make up all these layers of, I can't get customers. I'm afraid employees won't want to work for me and customers will see what a fake I am. I, um, no one wants to work in my place. Maybe they just don't want to work for me. I know people want to work because I say I go into McDonald's, there's 43 people running around. It all kind of can often come down to our belief about ourselves. So crap just got real. How do we deal with that? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's really, I love that, Mike. And that's so insightful. And uh, many people, I, I think, have a harder time being self-examined enough to, to ask those questions. But you know what? Now that you've put that out there. That is so important in this process because when we try to, we try on a new story, right? It's like a suit that we've never worn before and it feels awkward and we put a tie on and it feels weird around our neck and whatever. So if we go too fast into a new story without going where you just went, getting a little more real with ourselves about why, why is this so intimidating? Why is this story so, why am I so attached to the old story? and self-examined what's underneath it, that's a really valid part of the process. So how do you do that? Ask yourself, ask yourself some questions. This is a really good exercise. Ask yourself the question, if I'm really honest with myself, what's my biggest fear? Because it's always fear. It's Mm -hmm. always fear. What's my biggest fear around hiring? Forget all the other stuff outside. Just go in and ask yourself that. And believe me, something, some voice will come up. So I, just as a prompt, Mike, I love your introspection example, but I think a lot of people have a hard time knowing how to do that. So that's the first step is ask yourself, what if I'm being honest, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid would happen? Let me give two things before Tracy moves on to the, the new kind of global story. One, I really liked 
I'm such an A, B type. Well, that's a story that isn't helping me. And this is a story that will help me. I'll just move. And then sometimes I and we get frustrated with ourselves that we're not automatons that can just do that. Mm -hmm. So that can be a little overwhelming to tell myself this new story. But to try on a new suit, I can do that. Like I can just try on the story. We really just, I don't know, it takes a lot of the pressure off for me. Like I can definitely try in any store I want. If I don't like it, I can just take it back off again. I can put on my old comfy clothes. So I love the trying on. Um, the last thing I just wanted to say to give you an encouragement and self, shameless self-promotion, not self, because I don't know how to do this, but Tracy does. Um, that conversation has to be had. A lot mm -hmm. of people want to skip that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do the work of really figuring out what the problem is. I just, just, again, Mike, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. And it's not that I won't tell you what to do. I just know it won't make sense to you. You won't be able to do it. You won't people want to have what they want to have. And so, you know, to get what you have to have, you have to do what you need to do. And most of the time they get that one, but they don't get, you have to be who you have to be before you can do it mm. before you can have what you need to have. So many of us, myself included, aren't introspective enough. I sound like a genius because I've listened to a thousand of you guys. So it's easy for me to see you do it, but I can't do this. That's why I have coaches. Um, mm -hmm. they're not certainly tactical coaches. Here's what to do. But before we even get to the tactical, you need a, a mindset coach, someone that can help you. So I just don't want people to get overwhelmed. Like I can't ask those questions. That doesn't make sense. It all sounded clear when Mike and Tracy were talking about it. I tried doing it on my own. I couldn't, my mind wandered or I just couldn't get there. So some of you, Tracy's probably strong enough. She can do some of this on her own. Most of us, I can't need a coach. So mm -hmm. I would just encourage you, don't beat yourself up for, I can't, A, don't skip it and just go, ah, I can't do it. It's too hard. I'll just pay Mike to tell me what to do. It's like, I won't even take your money. <laughs> if you're not, if you're not open to who you need to be, I can't tell you what you need to do. So don't skip the hard work for sure. If you can't do it on your own, don't give up. Find a coach to ask you these questions. Definitely. Um, and if you can do it on your own, God bless. I'm not, I mean, there's a small percentage of the society that can just take some time, think these through, and get to where they need to get. I'm just not a member of that society. So give yourself permission to be human and not expect that this all goes perfectly on your own. Is that fair, Tracy? Or did I overstate that's it? Totally, that's absolutely fair. And, and that is exactly why we we in our world are so keen on coaching in general, just having a coach coaching because we, we very rarely are as self observed, the, observing ourselves as we need to be or want to be. So if this is new to you, especially find someone who can help you, who can support you, but being good, starting to get good at asking yourself, at least those initial questions is the place to start. And I got to tag on to that. And then Tracy's got to tell her story because we're running out of time. But yes. um, just to let you know how serious we are about this, I'm the freaking owner. I only know how to do tactical coaching. I do all the tactical coaching. We have one of me and half of my time is spent on mindset stuff anyway. And I'm not even good at it. It's just, that's what you guys really need. Two full-time mindset coaches. So if you're like, it's not like I have all this money I'm allergic to. I'm like, I need Tracy to have my or our mindset coaches. I know it's a skill that I'm not great at. So just if you're like, how important is that? And again, is I promise you, it wasn't you guys coming to me going, we want more mindset coaches. It was us going, they're I'm telling them exactly what to do, and they're getting results. And then we hired one coach. I'm like, that's not enough. Then we hired two coach. And half of what I do as the tactical guy is still a crappy version of the mindset coaching. And it's like talk to Tracy. So just so you know, my if I had a bias, it would be the tactical. That's what I'm good at, right? It's not like, well, I'm a mindset coach. Whoever needs mindset coach. I'm a freaking tactical coach. I fought mindset coaching for 20 years until I started coaching people and, and be like, I owed this person results. They gave me money. And going, well, I told them what to do. And then I told them again, and then I yelled it. And then I screamed it. And somehow they're not doing it. Try something different. So I just, I can't overemphasize. Get that help first. Coming from a guy who owns a company that was founded on tactical stuff and believes tactical is important. And you need both, right? Bad mindset, good good plan, strategy, failure. Good uh, mindset, bad bad strategy, failure. So you need both. You do. Um, okay. So give us a story and we act way too much to do half the things I want to do. I'll we'll do this again. Just give us a, a new story that would cover kind of all of that stuff that we talked about from the superficial all the way to the deep down, how I really feel. So I want to frame this just to, to help us out here. Let's assume in this new story that you're seeking out a new strategy too. So we'll just kind of Let's just assume that that's already a foregone conclusion. You're seeking out a new strategy. So the story that goes along with this new outcome and the new strategy you're going to embrace in order to get there can sound like starting with self, right? Hey, listen, I know who I am. I have an amazing 
set of core values and beliefs, and I deliver great service. I know this. I know the right people when they come to me are going to love working for me. So I, what if I don't even have that. Yeah. What if I'm like, I could say it, Tracy, but if I was being real honest, I don't know that I believe it. <laughs> well, that, I would say that would be the first work. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the, helping yourself develop and move the story around who you are, who you're being first, because if that's in the way and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to throw it out there and I'll just see who comes and hopefully, they, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, that won't work. That absolutely won't work. So, okay, so let's back it up a little bit. Beep, 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 <laughs> back it up <laughs> and uh, take, it, take it one step back. So in order to find something, because you have to show up as the person being, right, believing in yourself and the value that you bring um, before anyone else can. So if that's challenging for you in this area, then I always call it borrow. Borrow from some other part of your life that you are absolutely a rock star, that you're proud of yourself over, that you've accomplished and you take and you dip into that. You go, all right, well, you know what? Maybe I'm not as confident in this area yet, but I have had X, Y, Z situations in my life. Something was really challenging. It was hard and wasn't sure exactly how to do it, but I got resourceful. I I, you know, persevered through it. I learned, I evolved, I got more confidence. And you know what? If I can do it there, I bet I could do it here. I bet I can bring that person to this situation. Let me give the second half to that because I feel like this has all been mindset, which is phenomenal. I finally got a tactical thing. So yeah. <laughs> none of us are complete failures and none of us are complete successes. The most successful person, you know, has fears and, and all that good stuff. And mm. the most failure person has had a place in their life where they're in their flow and they gave value and they were powerful. Yes. So that borrowing is huge because there's, there's no the truth. I suck and I'm, I have no value. Right. <laughs> I'm the best and I have nothing but value and no weaknesses. No, all, <laughs> both ridiculous <laughs> statements. So absolutely borrow from your own thing. You're not borrowing from someone mm-hmm. else. You're borrowing from yourself, which is yours. Mm-hmm. The other thing I want to give you is give yourself permission to be honest. So this is the mm-hmm. tactical part for me. A lot of people, when they're first client, they try to be all fancy. I'm you know, puffed up like they've got, I got a uniform and my insurance and an LLC and all this stuff to make them feel like it's okay. But at the end of the day, they're always worried I'll be discovered, right? So just go to the person. Hey, Tracy, you'll be my first client. I got to be honest. If you're looking for someone that's got a bunch of equipment and money and experience and employees, I'm not your guy. But since you're my first client, I promise you, no one's going to love and care for you more than I will. You'll be one of a hundred for someone else. You're one of one for me, girl. And And same thing for your first employee. I was just going to get there. Um, (laughs) And guess what? Tracy might be like, nope, I want bigger, more blah, blah, blah. And she might say, no, thank you. That's okay. Some Tracy's out there are going to go, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. That's exactly what I want. I want that personalized attention. I would rather be a big fish in your little tiny pond than a little fish in someone else's big pond. There's no right or wrong. Same with employees. I'm big and tough and I know everything and I don't want to do, I'm afraid to do an interview. They'll, they'll find out I'm faking all this weird stuff. Hey, Tracy, I gotta be honest. I'm just a cleaner trying to build a business and I promise I'll treat you fair. I promise I'll care about you. I promise I'll never screw you. I promise you can talk to me anytime. Um, but I'm going to screw up. I'm not a perfect boss and you'll figure that out sooner than later. So just know if we work together, you might, you might be cleaning toilets together. Mike, I'm just cleaning with a, with a janitor. Yeah. For a couple of weeks or months, that may be the case. So give yourself permission to that way. There's nothing for Tracy to find out when she comes aboard and finds out it's mm-hmm. me and my dog and you know a couple of cleaning supplies in my basement. So give yourself permission to a borrow from your, your more Past powerful success. self Yes. and B just be honest with yourself and mm-hmm. Recognize you have value. The fact that you're one of one clients has some weaknesses and has some strengths. Just find someone that wants those strengths, right? You don't have to, like, if I'm like, I only date girls that have my spiritual beliefs. I don't have to try and be like, well, Tracy's Jewish. I'm going to pretend I can be me. And I'll just find someone that shares those beliefs as opposed to like trying to trick Tracy into some weird thing. Like there's plenty of people that want a small deal and won't, don't want a big. All right, Tracy, we're going to have to reconvene because I feel like- I know, once again- <laughs> All right. Yeah. We will come back. Let's get on the schedule so we can finish this. We'll do a part two. Um, that's a cleaning nation. If you're like, ah, yeah, I need more. Help me out. Part two is not out yet. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Start with the, the on-demand masterclass. It's 40 minutes of our best stuff, both on tactical and mindset. And at the end, you will have the opportunity to talk to a coach that can help you walk through some of these questions. Growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now. I'll see you there. 
Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. That's 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.